Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome back to Tropical Fruit Week here at Rockledge Gardens. Uh, this is Seth again. Um, this week we're going to be focusing on avocados. Just want to start off and talk a little bit about the kind of the history of avocados in general. Um, so they originally came from Mexico. Um, this was like hundreds of thousands of years ago. Um, they actually lived pretty much that whole time with a very unique relationship with three animals that are now extinct. Um, it was the giant sloth, which is a three ton sloth. It was the giant armadillo, which is the armadillo the size of a car and mammoths, woolly mammoths. Um, so yeah, all those went extinct with the last ice age about 10,000 years ago, but somehow avocados survived. So the reason they survived is actually because of humans. Um, around the same time that they would have gone extinct, uh, humans actually entered North America and found them in Mexico and started growing them and breeding them. And yeah, and now we have avocados. Uh, so yeah, thank our ancestors because without them, they would have gone extinct. There are three main categories of avocados. Uh, the first one is a Mexican avocado. Uh, the second is Guatemalan and the third is West Indian. Typically, they're kind of condensed into two main categories, which are either the Mexican avocados or the Florida avocados. Um, so typically, the Mexican avocados are like the ones you get in the grocery store. So they're usually a dark purple or black skin. Uh, they're usually bumpy, smaller, and have a much higher oil content than the Florida do. Um, the Florida avocados, on the other hand, are usually a lot bigger. They have a lower oil content, um, usually a smooth green skin when they're ripe. So Mexican avocados are probably the ones that you guys are most familiar with. Um, they're the same ones that you get at the grocery store. Um, those ones specifically are the Haas avocados, but there are several other uh, varieties that are somewhat similar for the most part. Um, so Mexican avocados tend to be uh, smaller than the Florida avocados. They tend to have a black or purple skin that's pretty bumpy. Um, and they also have a lot higher of an oil content than the Florida avocados do. So the only thing with Mexican avocados is not all of them grow in Florida. Um, it's a lot more humid here than what a lot of those avocados are used to. Um, so most of them just can't handle the humidity long term and usually end up dying after a couple of years. Mexican avocados can actually handle a lot colder temperatures than the Florida avocados can. Um, a lot of times they can actually handle temperatures all the way down to the, into the teens. Um, on the other side though, they're not quite as salt tolerant. Florida avocados are a little bit different than the Mexican avocados are. Um, they tend to be a smooth green skin. They're a lot bigger than the Mexican avocados are. Um, and they also have a much lower oil content. Um, so some of them have a really good texture though, like a very buttery kind of creamy texture still. Um, the trees themselves tend to, tend to do a lot better uh, in saltier conditions. They can handle a lot of salt fairly well. Actually, I've seen them growing like right next to the ocean before and doing great. Um, all right, if you want to follow me to the next tree here, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the growing conditions for avocados. So avocados, just like the mangoes, definitely prefer a drier environment over a wet one. Um, again, the number one reason people kill avocados is because they get too much water. So just like the mango, the avocado leaves will also turn brown on the tips when they get too much water. Um, and again, that dark black line between the brown and the green is a good indication that it's getting too much water. So if you see that, make sure you pull back on the watering um, and they should bounce right back. So as I mentioned before, different types of avocados have different salt tolerances. So depending on your location and what kind of water you're irrigating with, you want to factor that into the type of avocado tree that you go with. Um, so size wise, they do get pretty tall and pretty wide. Um, they typically get about 30 to 40 feet tall and usually about 30 feet wide as well. Next up, I'm going to be talking about a few different varieties of avocados. Uh, this one here is a Brogdon. Um, so just so you know, Haas, the, the regular Haas avocados you get at the grocery store don't do very well down here. Um, it's a little too wet and too humid for them. Um, they really do well in like the drier areas like California and certain parts of Mexico. Um, the Brogdon is very, very similar though in terms of taste. Um, it's virtually going to be the same taste. Um, it does have a slightly different consistency. It's more of like a buttery consistency, which I mean, I personally think it's better. Um, and the, the skin is a little bit thinner as well, so it's easier to peel this avocado than it is to scoop it out. Um, but in terms of taste, it's really, really good avocado. Um, it grows to maybe like 30 or 40 feet. Uh, again, you can keep them smaller just by trimming them every now and again. Um, this is the third year on this guy, um, so and it was planted from a little three gallon uh, plant essentially. So it's fairly good growth on it. Um, it's got this beautiful red leaves when it comes out, but when the leaves come out. So yeah, it definitely can be an attractive tree at the right time of year. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you want just a normal avocado, just something similar to the grocery store, highly recommend this one. And this avocado behind me is a Lila avocado. Um, this is also a Mexican variety, so very similar to the Brogdon, similar to the Haas. Um, so it's gonna have a similar fruit. It's gonna be a uh, kind of a bumpy uh, dark purple or black skin, whatever it's ripe. Um, this is a very tasty, very creamy avocado. Um, definitely one of the best ones out there. 
Um, it is also extremely cold hardy as well. Um, this can actually go all the way down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which we never get that cold in Florida. You should never have one of these die from the cold weather here, which is nice. The Lila avocado behind me is a type A avocado. Um, so something else you should know about avocados is there's two different types. There's a type A and a type B. Um, it can sort of be boiled down to male and female. They all will produce fruit, but male and female when it comes to pollination at least. So all avocados will produce by themselves, um, but if you have a type e, A and a type B near each other, um, you'll get significantly more fruit from each one of them. Um, in general, they bloom around the same time of the year. There's gonna be a slight difference in, in the actual opening of the flowers, but usually it's close enough to where they all pollinate each other. Um, so yeah, if you want a lot of fruit from each one, definitely get two of them nearby. Um, there are a few that are self-pollinating. Um, again, you, just having another one nearby does increase the fruit even more. Um, but yeah, it's definitely uh, something to keep in mind. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's pretty much all you guys need to know for avocados. Um, so in general, it's a fairly easy fruit here in Florida. Um, so the most important thing is just don't overwater it. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below or stop on by and talk to one of us sales associates. We'd be more than happy to help you guys out. Um, yeah, thank you. Bye.